Roots Radio 88.5. Jimmy Daniels here with you. Good afternoon. Hope you're having a great day so far. I'm having a really good day. I've got Austin Davis in the studio here with me. What's going on, Austin? Doing good. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. Congratulations, man. Finally did it. You got that conference championship. How's it feel? It was great. It was uh, everything we wanted to do, everything we wanted to accomplish, um, just to to go through four, really five years of wanting to accomplish that and to mm-hmm. finally get it um, in that situation and that no one gave us a chance really on the road number six team in the nation undefeated yeah i don't know if i could write a better script and I'm, I'm glad it worked out the way it did i am too man and it seemed like you know y'all did go in there and play with the chip on your shoulder i remember the uh post-game interview fedora was saying you know there were uh news organizations talking about the game and sure. they pretty much didn't even mention southern miss it was all about houston so yeah did y'all take that with you? Well, that was kind of something that Coach pointed out continually through the week was, you know, watch uh, watch the news. Watch when they talk about the conference championship games. They won't even mention our name. And, and it was funny because they, they mentioned three different games. And on both other games, they mentioned both teams. And they got to us, and it was just wow. Houston's got a chance to play in the BCS, this, that, and the other. And, and they were a good football team, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we were just as good. And yeah. uh, no one realized that. Uh, but we did. So yep. we, we knew going into the game that if we played well, we could win big. I, I told some guys we're going to win by three touchdowns. So it yep. shocked everybody else but us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think a lot of it – I mean, of course, you had a stellar game. Uh, uh, you, what, threw four touchdown passes. You, you threw for uh, 279 yards, uh, completed 17 of 33 passes. So you had an amazing game. And we were talking about the Nasty Bunch last week, and I think the Nasty Bunch had a major <laughs> – I mean, they had to have been the toughest defense that Houston's played all season. Yeah, I think so. I think I think you could see that in the way um, the problems they caused for Houston's offense. They've been so good. I mean, I think they were averaging fifty-two points a game, Mm -hmm. over six hundred yards a game, just ridiculous numbers. Mm -hmm. But our defense mixed up the coverage. Uh, Our D line absolutely got after the quarterback. Um, Cordero Law played phenomenal. Oh man, he Um, was always on Keenum. Yeah, it was it was (laughs) great to see. I mean, and. And I talked to him before the game, a couple of the D linemen. I was just messing around with him. I was like, I need to be the best quarterback on the field Saturday, so y'all need to help me out. <laughs> and they went out and did it. They played hard and they did a good job. And it was a blast to to be there and experience that. I, I wish we could go back and play it again. I know. I wish I, <laughs> I wish I could watch it again, not knowing what happened, because I, I'm telling you, I was hoarse for about a day sure. after that game, sitting there screaming at my TV. But uh, and it, you were talking about uh, being the best quarterback on the field, and you definitely were. Last week, you. You didn't really want to get into the quarterback duel aspect of it, but you really, you really did uh, so much better. I mean, he threw for more yards, but he also threw sixty-seven times. But he threw for two inter- uh, two touchdowns and two interceptions, which um, Keenum had only thrown three interceptions the entire season. year. Yeah, so I think that just is a huge credit to what our defense did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, his numbers for quarterbacks was absolutely ridiculous if you just look at his completion percentage and his his yards and it's just video game type numbers yeah and uh, for our defense to go out and do what they did I, I think they obviously coached did a great job had a great scheme mm. um, and, and I think they did they played with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder and and had something to prove mm-hmm. and um and, and that's kind of what they went out and did yeah well, with with this, you know, it's your senior season. Uh, you, you won the conference championship your fourth year in, and I think that this this era of Southern Miss football is pretty much going to be known as the Fedora Davis era because y'all been together throughout the whole thing. And I was wondering if you could touch maybe a little bit on the whole idea of you know you've got a new coach, someone that is new at mm-hmm. being a head coach, and then you as a redshirt freshman coming in and playing your four years together yeah. like maybe touch on some of the growing pains and, and the things that you built upon to get there yeah I think there were obviously coach being a first year head coach um as a just as a player would he probably had things he had to learn too and mm-hmm. and and as far as running a program and being a head coach and and all those things and and, and likewise me as a player I had to do the same and mm-hmm. coming from a high school where I didn't know much about reading the defense or any of that stuff so yeah. I and we we kind of put we, he put the system in, mm. and, and then we began to uh, get better and better. I remember if you remember back to the first couple games of his his era right. when we were I don't know, we were two and five or we were really struggling. We were kind of on the verge of not even having a winning season. Yeah. yeah, and then we got hot at the end of that year and ended up winning, um, getting to a, to the New Orleans Bowl, beating mm. Troy in the New Orleans Bowl, and then you could just see each year how. At the more he implemented his system and got his players and, mm-hmm. and things just started to mesh, how we were getting better and better. And, and honestly, I thought we could have won it 
the past two years. Right. I, I really feel like my sophomore year may have been our best team. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, outside of this year, probably. Right. I think this year, this year. Our, our defense was as good as I've ever ever yeah. been on the nasty so, bunch is definitely back they, they were back yeah. this year and it was and it, and it was good to see and uh we, we we were productive on offense but i feel like we've been maybe better offensively my sophomore year mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. i don't know about the numbers who, who know, the numbers sometimes the numbers lie but right. i feel like we, we kind of um we were better that year but our defense was the difference this year they were right. they were special yeah yeah and uh, they they really have they've stepped up and i, I think uh I, I think i can agree with you about about your sophomore year but it's just something very special about this team it seems like kind of really, chemistry that's kind of what kind of what everybody felt I, I remember thinking when coach Jackson came in and the summer workouts were going good and uh, coach Dish came in and, and put in his defensive scheme and everybody was just buying in mm-hmm. and we had a good core group of seniors and mm-hmm. I think from from what I've seen playing college football that's what it takes to win as a not even that they have to start. Mm-hmm. We have 21 seniors, and all of them are not starters. But right. it's just a good group of seniors who can lead, who who know what it takes, who have been there. And, and all of us had, had been there, mm-hmm. uh, been so close to getting the championship that we kind of – we knew it was going to take just a little bit more. And, and we talked all season that we had a chance to be special, and yeah. and it worked out. And you were, man. You, you, you made history. 11 wins the first time in Southern Miss history. Got the conference championship. And speaking of the conference championship, let's touch back on that one again. That, I wanted to ask you this. I, I can't help myself, but that trick play towards the end of the game, <laughs> you know, there's there's not a lot of time left. And I understand, you know, Houston can score in bunches, you know, really sure. fast. But I thought it was hilarious that, that you went for the trick. Were you well, all just goofing around at that well, point? Or? To, be, to be honest, if you watch Houston all year on mm-hmm. film, mm-hmm. they were in games like that, and they ran the score up late. Oh, yeah. And they would score three or four touchdowns. They would have their backups in the game just – Throwing the ball downfield, yeah, and 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 our coach said, if we get a chance, we're going to do what they've done to everybody else all year. <laughs> a little bit of a payback. I love it. And we had that chance, <laughs> and 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 we also obviously wanted to beat them as bad as we could to impress voters and do right. do the best for us in, in the rankings. And um, yeah, so pro- <laughs> I, I watched the TV copy. Uh, Mike Patrick and Craig James said that was probably not going to get us any sportsmanship. Ratings, well, but uh, it's uh, part of the game, and and the players loved it. The oh, players yeah. absolutely loved it, and to be put in that situation, and then for the coaches to follow through mm-hmm. and say, "Hey, let's go ahead and let's yeah. put another one on them." Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that felt good, <laughs> All, even though it didn't work out. Yeah, I think the fans loved it too, and uh, it goes back to a quote I think Fedora said a while back: "Is that we've got to learn to put our foot on their necks." When we're yeah, out. yeah. And as far as Craig James, I, I I don't have very many kind words to say about that guy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so who cares what he has to say? Well, I know it's 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 been kind of a tumultuous time after the conference championship. You know, you're on such a high, yeah. And then and then you kind of get hit with this this bowl scenario, and then you you get hit again. Well, first you get hit with the polls, then you get hit with the bowl mm-hmm. scenario, and then you mm-hmm. get hit with uh, Fedora might be leaving. Um, how, sure. How is the team handling this right now? Well, I think the biggest thing is not to forget what we just accomplished. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's kind of hard, like you said, with all the negative media and the bowl. and um, it's, it's unfortunate that we didn't get to go to the Liberty Bowl. Yeah. Obviously, being conference champs, that's the number one bowl that Conference USA mm-hmm. wants to send their, their champion team to. Right. Um, so – the loophole, whatever it was or whatever it is that's a part of the contract between Conference USA and the SEC and the Liberty Bowl, I think that needs to be addressed. I yeah. mean, I feel like the Conference USA is a good enough conference that their champion deserves a really, really good bowl mm-hmm. and, and, and an automatic no no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They deserve to go play in a good bowl. I mean, as you could see, this year's Conference USA championship game was against two ranked teams mm-hmm. at, at both at one point in the season could have played for BCS Bowls. Right. And and it just I just feel like the conference conference just says not getting the respect that they deserve. Mm. I don't know if that's the commissioner's fault. I don't know if that's the Liberty's fault. I don't know. Yeah, it so, has to be. It has to be the commissioner. I, I mean, because uh, he's the one that signed off on it to, to let that. Yeah, something happen. something like yeah. that. But, so with that being said, um, I, I'm excited about going to Hawaii. I think yeah. it'll be great. I think it'll be great for the players. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be a once in a lifetime opportunity and i think that's what the coaches and the administration saw in that opportunity so right. uh, i'm excited about going and i think what we have to do as a team is kind of refocus mm-hmm. we didn't get the bowl we wanted obviously mm-hmm. that hap- there's nothing we can do about that right. we won the championship we wanted to win 
now we got to refocus and go play a good Nevada team. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And and as far as uh, 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 keeping focused on Nevada, um, have you been watching any film on them during your time off, or have you been paying attention to them at all? Uh, we haven't really done a lot. I mean, obviously with Coach Fedor, the rumors on Coach Fedor and everything oh. kind of circulating, mm-hmm. um, I haven't been up to the offices at all to do any of that. We'll just kind of wait and see what happens mm-hmm. on that. Nothing's official. It seems yeah. like it's it's almost official, but not official. Right, right. So it's hard to say what's going to happen there. Um, well, but are, once that gets panned out, we'll move forward. And y'all are pretty much as as much in the dark as as the fans and everybody else is with this whole Fedora thing. At this point, at this point, we are. And we'll, like I said, we'll just have to wait and see. I yeah. don't know what to say. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, I think it's going to be a pretty good matchup uh, as far as facing off Nevada because uh, last year they were uh, the team that knocked off Boise State mm-hmm. to keep them out of the BCS Bowl and um, they they lost a few guys to the NFL last year which kind of hurt them uh, I think they have pretty good offense let's see I've got the stats here they're eighth in rushing they're 30th in passing but their defense is kind of weak which is great for you <laughs> but uh, it feels like it could be kind of a trap t- trap game you know one oh, of those situations yeah where, absolutely yeah. I think um I think the biggest thing that's going to be tough is the bowl game. Um, and, and talking to Coach Anderson, he was saying, let's go enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And um, and let's go have a good time. Let's enjoy the season we had. And that's really what a bowl game is about. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you still want to win. And you yeah. still want to play good in front of a national audience. I'm sure the game will be on ESPN. or yep. There will be a lot of people watching. So mm-hmm. I think um, it's the only game that day. It's, it's Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So... Yes, we want to have a good time, and and guys are going to enjoy Hawaii, of course. Oh, yeah. But we still got a, a game to play, and it being my last game and, and these twenty one seniors' last game, we don't want to go out there and flop around and, and get beat. I mean, right. we want to have a good showing mm-hmm. uh, and hopefully win the ball game. So we're going to have to refocus a little bit, and then we're going to have to do a good job of, of leading this team and kind of getting them steered back in the right direction that'll be on me and the rest of these seniors yeah i was wondering if you were going to get together with the other, the other leaders of the team and, and try and yeah i think once everything settles down and we kind of get focused on what we got and everything we kind of get a clear path of what's going on i think we can do that i think we can mm-hmm. say okay this is what we got you know this is what everything's going to happen and then we're going to go move forward from there yeah yeah well man i can't tell you how proud southern miss nation is for you guys of you guys for uh just completely dominating houston the way you did and it, and it's it, it's really funny uh this is a an interesting little stat or note here uh this is the second time in a row that southern miss has gotten a conference championship by beating an undefeated number six texas team that was ready to go to a bcs wow ball. yeah that's great uh tcu in 2003 and it, it was you know southern miss just completely handed it to same him. situation yeah it was beautiful wow yeah that that's pretty neat um like i said earlier the situation and it, you couldn't have drawn it up any better mm-hmm. with the way the media was with all the attention on houston um and, and probably for good reason they were a good football team mm-hmm. don't get me wrong but we kind of felt disrespected and and we used that for our advantage yeah yeah and uh hopefully we'll start getting a little bit more respect uh I don't know, maybe next year, of course, with all the, the crazy things that are going on. You never know. But Southern Miss has been a perennial hard knock team, always sure. plays with a chip on their shoulder. And, and it's great to see you guys carry on the tradition. I'm very happy to see you going out as a conference champion. I know that was very important to you, and it's very important to the fans. And, mm. um, man, I wish you well in everything you do in the future. Yeah, I appreciate I appreciate you having me. And I'm, it's been a great, great few years. It really has. And, and like you said, going out with a conference championship – and capping off uh, a great career and, and enjoying everything about I mean, I love Southern Miss. Yeah. And uh, to finish out like this, is I, I couldn't ask for a better scenario. Well, we're happy for you, man, and we're all proud of you. And thanks again for coming in, and I hope to speak to you again soon. All right, I appreciate it. All right, take it easy, buddy. All right, that was Austin Davis on Ridge Radio 88.5 for Southern Miss today. I'm Jimmy Daniels. Oh, I do want to say there is a situation uh, people are setting up uh, a fund. There are two funds out there. One you want to stay away from. One you you want to help out on. One of them is somebody set up a foundation to uh, help get the players' families out to Hawaii. Do not donate to this fund. Do not help this fund. It's a major NCAA violation. Uh, as far as I know, nobody's really jumped in on it and and put any funds in there. But if you see that site, I know you want to help these people out and uh, you know get the families out there to see their kids play. But uh, don't. Don't do it because you get Southern Miss into a lot of trouble. One fund you do want to help out on, I believe, uh, is uh, what the, a lot of alumni and fans are doing is they're getting um, they're sending they're setting up a fund at Hancock Bank, and I'll get the website uh, address up for you on the Facebook page WSM eighty eight five Facebook page. Um, 
they're sending the sixty dollars in for a ticket, and they're also sending gold T-shirts out to the servicemen at Hawaii, so they can go to the game, wear the gold, have the sea of gold, and uh, cheer on the uh, Golden Eagles. So if you want to get involved in that, I'll have the web address up for you, and uh, go help donate and get some fans out there cheering for Southern Miss. But uh, that is going to wrap it up for us today. Thanks again to Austin Davis, and we will have Tracy Lampley on tomorrow. So. Stay-